us towards this end. Uh, the teaching on uh, on God's economy, part one and part two, as we did uh, last week, uh, the religious spirit, the Jezebel spirit, uh, all of these things were to bring you to this point. We're going to have a very, very, very interesting, interesting show. Uh, I did a part two to uh, the religious spirit on last night. If you have not seen that as yet, I strongly suggest you go and take a look at that on YouTube or on my Facebook page. For those of you that have your phones, if you have an Android platform or an iPhone, uh, you can download my apps from either one of the, either the Apple Store or the Play Store on your Android device. Uh, Kevin L. Ewing Ministry or Minister Kevin L. Ewing, you can download it to receive all of my information, teachings, videos, uh, so on and, and so forth. I'm not going to give it, I'm not going to go much time into no review of all of that other stuff. Please go and watch the video. Uh, there's a big controversy I've started up. <laughs> I got to mention this piece here. There's a big controversy that are inclusive of the religious spirit, and that was dealing with the, the tide. And the only reason why I'm bringing up this piece here to you is I told you, I promise you that in order for me to do the Thai teaching, I had to would have initially uh, do the teaching on uh, God's economy. All right, I had to do that, and I did that. I did God's economy, and I did the religious spirit. And I was explaining to you. Many people asked me what was my view on tithing, and I told them I have not tithed since I left the church building. I am the church. Every believer of Jesus Christ is the church, but I left the building that some of us gather to praise the Lord. You can gather anywhere to praise Jesus Christ. You don't need a building to officially call it the gathering. Let me be clear there. I left that and I discontinued pay, paying my tithes. When I paid tithe, I stayed broke, busted, disgusted, cannot be trusted, somewhere in the corner eating custard, doing all of that stuff. I gave the seed, I gave the billy goat seed, I gave the first fruit, last fruit, third fruit, quarter fruit, uh, grapefruit, bread fruit, I give every type fruit, I give pastoral offering. Everything I did, they asked me to do, I did. I found myself more in the cycle of poverty, more in the cycle of poverty, and my I was always poor, my economic state. This had nothing to do with the Word of God because what I was being told and to participate in was not the laws, the rules, the commandments, and the ordinances of God. Instead, they were traditions handed down by men that majority of so-called church leaders take on, passing that baton on to you. And in those schemes, very few, if any, but yeah, actually one person will always survive and be the top notch here, and that would be the leader, all right? And Jesus Christ made it very clear in his word in uh, Matthew 15, verses 1 to 6. And he said, he says, listen, <laughs> It is because of the tradition, not my word, it is because of your tradition, your uh, whatever you have allowed to be handed down to you that I've never placed in my word, that has kept you broke, that has kept you frustrated, that has kept you boring, that has kept you living a financially embarrassed life. Well, when I left, well, even before I left, just before I left, I started taking my income and actually following the scriptures. I allowed the Lord to lead me to whom he would want me to bless with my income. And guess what? It was never limited to the 10% because the word was very clear, part of his rules in the book of Corinthians where he said, if you, he told you, if you sow sparingly, so if you stick to the 10%, even though you've got a whole heap of money, you say, I'm going to stick with the 10%, well then, send in, in return. But in the New Testament, he says, listen, you could, you could do that. You could stick with that. You could sow uh, sparingly and grudgingly. But be acutely aware of this, likewise you shall receive. However, if you sow bountifully, okay, so shall you reap for the Lord loved a will give up. And he is the one who's going to minister seed to those whom he know will sow into the lives of other people. So I changed up my whole strategy of my finances. And that is, I wasn't wasting my money and pouring it into some pastor or some church and so on. And that's not to say that I don't. We do give to churches. We do bless other leaders, but not to the commitment that we, that we did back then. Because that is not scriptural. 
will teach you to give within your congregation to the poor, the needy, the destitute, and particularly outside of that, which you are called to do, then you likewise will begin to see your life change. Now, I know a lot of you will question that and get mad and so on, and I expect that. I've been getting a lot of hate mail, and I'm not angry. I expect that because I know how difficult it is to challenge a religious spirit when something was inculcated into your cerebral for so many years, and then somebody's going to quote-unquote pop out of the blue and tell you something different, even though they're quoting it from the scriptures. And in all of my teachings, I have given a myriad, an abundance of scriptures showing you how giving to the less fortunate outweighed almost a thousand to one giving to a particular church or a pastor. All right, I'm going to seal it up with this and I'm going to get into my commercials and my teaching. Number one, the tithing is not for us. It has nothing to do with you. You have been told stinking filthy lies over the years that if you don't pay a tithe, you're going to be cursed. The only way you will be cursed if you don't participate in this so-called tithe that you are mandated to pay if you are a Levite priest. Okay? And if your pastor is saying that Kevin is a liar, then he is a liar. Because I am going according to the scripture. Okay? The scriptures are very clear. And I went into details on this. The scripture says that God through Moses laid... Now listen, you Hebrew people, the 12 tribes of Hebrew, I am making this covenant with you guys, and particularly the, 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 the tribe of Levi. And the covenant is that the priest will come through the Levitical tribe. And I, th listen to what he said now. He said, now, the, the deal is here that when you go into the promised land, all of you except for Levi will have an inheritance, meaning own. Levi will not get no property because the covenant I'm making with them is that you 11, which would be Reuben, which would be Simeon, God, Nephtali, the Benjamites, the Judah, all the other rest of the 11, you, this is the deal, you must now give to Levi when you get into the promised land. You must give them a tithe or a tenth of all your earnings. This is how it's going to work. So Deuteronomy 40 now begins to give the breakdown of the tithe, how it's supposed to be used. The first and the second year, the Levites are supposed to eat it. The third year, they distributed blah, 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 blah. Right? Then he said, this is the part I get. This is the part what got me. He said, now, Levites, you're going into the promised land. You will own no land there. But what you will, this, is, this will be your inheritance. Your inheritance in the promised land is that the 11 tribe, I have commanded them to tie to you. But here's the catch. You cannot own no property. So if your leaders are telling you the tithe is still today, and your leaders are telling you, because clearly if they're accepting the tithe, they're clearly from the lineage of Levi. I told you this over and over. A Levitical priest is not a title. You, there's not a pastor title or an apostle, no. And the pastors, you're all hearing me, you all know I'm telling the truth. What that is, is you, the only way you could be a Levite is if you were born within that bloodline. Why is this important? Because, see, if I didn't see the word covenant, then we could make up a lot of stuff. Well, well you know, you still could use it today. No, 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 no. The covenant for this exercise to take place was the covenant that God made with the Levitical order. And, of course, all of that I will explain next week, giving you more than sufficient scriptures for it. So, therefore, if your pastor is collecting tithe from you and your pastor owned property, he's going to have to make a choice. If he's going to keep that tithe because he's following the Levitical, then he must give up the, the property to somebody because he can't own it. You cannot own the property and then you still collect the tithe. Because the covenant was the Levite, was to, the inheritance was to collect the tithe, but you cannot own no property. But I didn't come here for that today. I'll deal with that tomorrow. I'm going to quickly go into my sponsors because we've got a really, really exciting uh, uh, show today. We've got some new sponsors on board. Uh, first one here is by Bahama Beach Weddings. Bahama Beach Wedding, my good, dear friend, my wonderful uh, pastor friend, minister friend. 
for JP, a justice of the peace. He does anything to do with uh, weddings, if you want to be married, if you want to do any kind of affidavit signing and so on. This is the person that you want to uh, pay a visit. He gives free consultation. You don't have to pay for that. His number is 533-1942. That's 533-1942. You can also contact him on his email, which is C Gary. That's the letter C. G A R Y four seven three at gmail.com. That's C Gary four seven three at gmail.com. Uh, he also has a website and it's called Bahamas Beach Weddings dot biz B I Z. So that's Bahamas Beach Weddings dot biz. Okay, so you can contact him at any one of those uh, contacts. If you want to do any type wedding, any kind of content to do with governmental documents that would have in his power, he would be more than happy to assist you. And again, he does free consultation. That is Mr. Gary Cooper. Once again, his email is cgary473 at gmail.com. And his phone number is 533-1942. You can also check out his webpage, which is Bahamas Beach Weddings Biz. And that's weddings with an S. Bahamas Beach Weddings dot biz. Also, our friends again, J A N Builders General Construction Company. Their number is 352 2432, or you can reach them on their mobile, which is 533 2064. For all of your construction needs, if you want to build a home, you want to add peace to home, refurbish, remodel, if you want to build a driveway, a walkway, if you want to add a shed, whatever you want to do, they specialize in all construction needs and whatever construction purposes you may have, they would be more than happy. You can give uh, Karen or Julian a call at 352-2432, that's 352-2432 or 533 Two zero six four. Simply the best for all your audio and video needs. Their number is three five one six five one nine. Three five one six five one nine. If you want to do any kind of private video recording, uh, business, work, birthday parties, funeral, weddings, give Mr. Clifford or Mrs. Clifford Bo a call at one nine where they will be more than happy to assist you with all of your video and audio needs. Or maybe you may have these old VHSC tapes and so on, and you want to put them onto the new, um, you know, DVD or, or thumb drive or whatever. Man, listen, they, they can hook you up. They will be more than happy to do that for you. Then I have my good friend, Mr. Gary Hill and his wonderful family at Tico's Fashion Men's Store. They're located on Keith Street, office diagonally across from the Scotia Bank. Their number is 352-3394, 352-3394 for all of your men casual wear. For those of you who don't know, you can view me right now on Facebook, and I'm simultaneously streaming on my YouTube channel. I'm telling you this because I'm actually wearing a product from Tico's Fashion, this wonderful white shirt that I'm wearing, I love it, it's very cool. It's kind of humid outside, so this was ideal for me. So give Gary and his family a call at Tico's Fashion, it's a men's store. Get something for daddy, uncle, your cousin, papa, any one of them. Uh, they will cater to uh, any one of the male members of your family. And again, they're located on Kent Street. If you don't know where Kent Street is, then give them a call, 352-3394. And they would be more than happy to assist you. Then we have my wonderful friend. Yeah, I love this one. <laughs> Pick Here Beauty Center. Yes, my good friend, Miss Marcia Pickstock, is back in business. Yes, every, all of us had a little bout with the uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, but Marcia knows wasn't having that. Okay, <laughs> I got to squeeze this in here. So we know there's been, see, we, there was something worse than COVID-19 that took place among some of our females in society. And that is, they could not easily access the hairdresser. So therefore, many of them might have not been recognized. <laughs> they might have not been recognized during the COVID-19 uh, period. 
But my dear friend, my wonderful friend, Mrs. Marcia Pickstock, is willing and able and ready and armed to change that and bring you back to that natural, beautiful look, to fix that hair, and whatever it is that you need done, she will be more than happy to do it. So she specializes in hair care and wraps, bonding, short pixie haircut, hair weaving, ponytail, sculptured styles, you name it. Marcia Pickstock, the proprietor, will be more than happy. I, I don't know if she still have the hair braider on board as yet, uh, but you can give her a call. I'm about to give you the number. And she also, uh, the last time she they were up and running, they did have the manicure and pedicure. I do, I'm not certain if they still have that, but I'm going to give you the number to call them and she'll be able to advise you further. You can look, you can give her a call at the office at 352 2220 2220 or you can reach her on her cell at 5339326 that's 3 sorry 5339326 that's her mobile or cell phone or the office would be 3522220 and then finally we have my wonderful friends Mr. Uh, Tony and Angela Penniman at Entertainment and Snacks Town Center. Their number is 352-6954, 352-6954. For all of your delicious hot dogs, the variety of patties, beef, turkey, curry chicken, cheesy beef, spinach, vegetable patties. They also rent, sell DVD, movies, snacks, the works. Give them a call, pay them a visit. Outside is extremely hot and humid. I strongly advise you to stop there, get a soft drink, get some water, get something. Get that juicy, they got those beef a hot dog. I, I, I'm supposed to stay away from that, but I'm going to have to defy the doctor's orders just this once. Sorry, doc. I just got to get a, 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 a hot dog they got there. So give them a call at 352-6954. That's Entertainment DVD and Snack, where my wonderful friends, Tony and Angela Penniman, will be more than happy with their excellent staff who gives excellent service to assist you whatever you need in there. I said finally, but I must take that back. I forgot this last one. Listen, listen, listen. I, I love to pr promote my own. I take pleasure in uh, promoting my people who are doing big things in the world. And me and Deidre, our wonderful friend from Nassau. Now, I know some of you have heard about the Ramelda Rose collection, clothing collection, all right? Miss Jillian uh, Curry Williams, wonderful lady. Now, she has a magazine called Hope Magazine. Now, for those of you who are watching me, those of you who are watching me on uh, YouTube or Facebook, I have it in the camera right now. I have my copy. She have a magazine. I mean, this lady is just phenomenal. I mean, she she's clearly a clothing line specialist with beautiful design under the name of Romelda Rose Collection. And I mean, she just wasn't stopping there. I mean, it's like she, she, she ain't taking this no more. She decides to publish this Bahamian magazine called Hope Magazine. And I promised her, I said, listen, I am so proud of what you're doing here that I'm going to promote this for you for free because I love it. I love to promote my own. And please get a copy of this. Now, for right now, you can only get the copies from Amazon. But I'm sure she's working on different venues in which she can have it more conveniently available. Now, in, in uh, the section, sorry, the issue for, which one was that now? Because I'm trying to show you something, you know. She did some, uh, the COVID mask. I'm going to show it right here in the camera. She did some COVID mask for the, you know, because of the COVID thing. Listen, this lady has some stuff here. Um, she has blessed Deidre and myself with some of them, man. It is just unbelievable. I, I strongly suggest you get a copy of it. Her latest edition, which is the uh, January to March edition, okay? You would see in there, let me try to pull it up here. You would see in here an article by yours truly, and that would be me, uh, Minister Kevin Elioy. And that article 
That's another reason why you need to get it. <laughs> That's an, that article, I'm trying to find the actual. Okay, here we go. Journey into God's Word. If again, if you're looking uh, by uh, if you're looking by YouTube or Facebook, I have it in the camera right now, where we have a piece in there. But you're going to be hearing me speak more about her uh, uh, every time I have my show because she has some awesome stuff going on in here. Now, I'm going to show her in the camera here on this page. See how beautiful she looked? Look at that beautiful outfit. Uh, when I first got the book, I was trying to hide this, sorry, this magazine from her because I really love this dress and I didn't want DJ she go soon as she see that oh honey that look nice eh i know what i mean go get your wallet and go get it <laughs> so i say you know what i can't hide it because she gonna need to see the article with me and her star in there so i know she ain't gonna miss it so guess what as soon as she saw the the, the, the magazine she said oh my lord she said man jillian really look nice in that dress i said mm, yeah she looks beautiful let me see if i can hide my my checkbook and my wallet now to keep it from you <laughs> but nevertheless i'm being funny here she this is an awesome magazine with some brilliant in here. She uh, display a lot of her clothing line. Uh, she's a very much uh, family oriented person. Her husband, uh, Mr. Franklin Williams, he once was a magistrate here, right in Grand Bahama. A very humble man, very family oriented man. Listen, this, these people are awesome. So I strongly suggest that you go to Amazon, only for now, until she get other venues to make it more accessible, and get your copy of the Hope Magazine. Okay, the Hope Magazine. Okay, get a copy of that. Let's behemoths, let's promote our people, and let us let the world know that we're doing big things here in the Bahamas. With that said, and with no further ado, let's get into my topic for today. Again, I'm having this book placed in front of your face here. For those of you on YouTube, Church Mafia. Church Mafia, this is such a powerful book. This is a powerful book, okay? The reason why I am so elated about this book is because, very, very simple, I just got tired of the blatant shenanigans that I see happening in churches that is strictly from the pit of hell. I mean, the devil, cabbage patching and moon walking in the house. Well, I wouldn't even call it the house of God, whatever they call it. And let me be clear here, this is not all churches. This is not, there are churches out there, there are pastors, there are apostles, there are people who truly have a heart for God, who are truly sincere that when they went to Bible school or did their studies or made the decision to come on board, do ministry work they truly came with a pure heart they wasn't looking for nobody money they wasn't looking to rape no one financially none of that they truly believe in the power of God and the evidence of this is that like I've been telling you last night you will know them by their fruit okay the genuineness the, and one of the most exuding or exhibiting uh, uh, things that will emit from them is the that, that spirit of humility, no arrogance. They genuinely want to see other people excel. They're not putting these tags on you or labeling you or saying to you, you have to be under their covering, you have to come to their church, you have to buy into their anointing. None of that voodoo garbage, none of that foolishness. They want you to have your freedom in Christ Jesus, which is what you know I love. So Church Mafia is about this young man, uh, this pastor, He's from a third or fourth generation of pastors, his mother and father and all of those other stuff. And the book speaks very extensively in the beginning about where he came from, his lineage and so on and so forth. He became a pastor, had a young wife, a young family, but he realized that his ministry wasn't moving like his counterparts, his prophet friends and deliverance ministers. I mean, they were riding around in Hummers and Lamborghinis and jets and so on. And he became curious, you know, he's still here trying to maintain 15 people in his church and them 15 don't like him. So one day he, you know, kind of summarizing this, because like I said, in this teaching, I'm just going to take excerpts from this book and then we're going to compare it with the scriptures and even in today's world. So he one day got a, uh, in, in a conversation with one of his prophet friends and he was explaining to the guy, uh, which we'll kind of read on somewhat today, 
you know, how is it that, you know, you get all this stuff and, and whatever. And he told him, you need to be touched. So the guy was like, what do you mean I need to be touched? And what this guy was about to do, this is a man of God. This is a man of God now who is, who is being advised by, quote unquote, another man of God. He says, if you really want to do these miracles and so on, then you need to be touched. So I guess, and the guy, man, he was like, okay, man, I thought I had the Holy Spirit. I thought he said, no, 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 no. See, that's where you're going wrong with that. No, 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 no. You need to go to the spiritualist. You need to go to Sangoma. You need to go to the witch doctor because that's where all the big, pro most of the big profile so-called preachers are going. They go in there to get their bag of magic tricks and perform their so-called miracles. If you want, if you want to roll like us, then you, 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 you gotta, you gotta go through an initiation. And man, listen, when, when. When I read this book, I say, Lord, I, I, again, I knew this all along. Been preaching this for years. Okay? And, and some people accepted, some didn't. But what we're about to get into here is just going to be... So what I'm going to do is read the summary at the rear of this book. And again, it's called Church Mafia. He has a very long name. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce... I'm just going to pronounce his first name. And that is Makado. I cannot, this, this, these two last names are just too long and I don't want to embarrass myself, okay? So here's what the book is about. He says, the church mafia is a thought-provoking and tell-all book inspired by the life of Mercado, who took a courageous step to reveal how God saved him from secret and occult societies. He explores themes of his life in the ministry commercialization of gospel lessons learned from countries he traveled to in an effort to gain powers, okay, meaning evil powers, and detail of the occult operation. After years of struggling to accomplish his mission of pastoring a mega church and impacting the world, he became frustrated, stayed from his true calling, and fell into a trap of exploring secret powers hidden in the church today. He operated as a general, Katatan, within a counterfeit spiritual movement that operates under the banner of prophecy and instant miracles. This movement, uh, sorry, this movement, yes, operates under secret powers to attract huge crowds, charges consultation fees, and promises people miracle money. Leaders of this movement also perform false prophecies and staged miracles. After reading the Church Mafia, you will begin to understand that most operation in churches today are influenced by secret societies. Boy, I could jump on it right here. But anyway, I can be patient. The book will enable you to be enlightened and never to be fooled by any false doctrine practiced in the church today. The main aim of this book is to is to make aware the body of Christ at large about the secret operation that has captured so many church today. It is hoped that after reading this book, your life will be enriched. Now, with that said, and before I go into my scriptures, I had uh, put aside a page here that I wanted to read, a few pages, and page 45, I got it written right here, I want to read some parts from page 45. Now, this is a good ways in the book. I skip kind of a lot because it's really in the beginning, it's really giving you the foundation and how he got to where he was. So this part of the book on page 45, it's the title is called Inquiring About Powers. Okay. One day I asked one of the close, sorry, one day I asked one of the closest friends of Dr. Prophet who also experienced the second touch as it was usually called by them, how they obtained the second touch. 
they believe that the first touch usually happens when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And the second touch happens when you obtain powers from a particular person or spiritualist. Now, let me just be clear. Whenever you hear the word powers in this reading, they're talking about evil powers, witchcraft powers, where evil spirits are assigned to you to perform fake miracles, to um, give demonic prophecies and so on. The closest friend of Dr. Prophet was free enough to claim that since he received the second touch and impartation, he had seen huge changes in his ministry and finances increase within a short period of time. His story challenged me as the man did not even have any proper training from a Bible college. He used to play a keyboard at his church but was later introduced to this kind of operation. When he traveled with his prophetic friends of when he traveled with his prophetic friends of minds in ten crusades, Dr. Prophet was a powerful and eloquent preacher, and his friend used used to play melodic and touching keyboard hymns when he preached. After my serious conversation with this keyboard player, who was now a prophet, I told myself that I would that I would go and get the second touch and impartation in Nigeria. The keyboard player turned prophet said he had seen so many people visiting this country to obtain powers and upon their return their ministries would take a different turn that seemed prosperous. He mentioned that business people Presidents, politicians, pastors, celebrities, musicians, herbalists, and traditional doctors visited particular places in Nigeria that he knew, and they would return with powers to be famous, to be voted into top positions, to be wealthy, and to have miracles and prophetic powers after their encounters. I was listening to the self-made prophet with so much interest and enthusiasm to become blessed with the second touch as well. I was going to Nigeria as an opportunity, sorry, I saw going to Nigeria as an opportunity to obtain this impartation. I did not even reveal my plan to my wife as I knew that she would be against the whole change of direction. I raised money to pay my single entry visa. When my visa was released, my prophet friend told me that where we were going was where most prophets and influential people obtained their powers. I became really excited. This friend of mine gave me two options regarding this change of direction. I wanted to take to boost I wanted to take to boost my ministry. The first option was to visit few international pastors and prophets who had mega churches in Nigeria, who would lay their hands on me to be powerful. And the second option would, was to travel to the places where he and most powerful prophets obtained their powers instantly. As a pastor, I knew that I would not waste the money. I raised for both of us to get air tickets, accommodation, and food just for a person to lay his hands on me. I then suggested that we should go and obtain powers at the places to which prophets flocked. I then told him that I would visit these mega accomplishing my mission to obtain powers. The only thing I was afraid of was to be prophesied on TV publicly, as most of these mega churches usually broadcast their church services on TV. My friend looked at me and laughed hysterically. When I asked why he had, what he had found, sorry, when I asked why he had found the whole thing funny, he replied by saying, do you think what you see on most of these TV channels is real and true? I said, yes. Television can't lie. And my friend said, don't worry. Even if we can go to these televised miracle churches, you won't be prophesied upon since you will have, quote unquote, belonged and turn into one of us by then. Mm. I became a bit confused by what he said 
and then I brushed it aside. In a church and were labeled as witches on TV screens publicly. My experienced friends said such miracles were usually staged in order to promote how powerful the presiding prophet or the senior prophet is. What? I asked myself. Do you mean that even those old women who surrendered their juju or voodoo powers to the prophet are also scams? I asked. Yes, it is well rehearsed and arranged for, tele for televangelism purposes, and all these things are called to be the work of the man of God, he said. That is when I realized all this time people were being fed lies and staged performances in the banner of prophecy and miracles. Then the prophet said, don't worry, I will teach you all the tricks of this game since you have a willing heart and are eager to learn. All right? Now, I'm going to read about three more pages and then I'm going to get into the scriptures to bring some light to you. So on page, on chapter 5, is titled Nigeria. And it's, the subheading here is preparing to travel to Nigeria. So clearly he has made the decision based on the popularity and wealth of his friends, he became encouraged. But I want you to see so far that he knew exactly what he was getting into. And that was the point I was making in my other teachings that these people who stand on pulpit and make these claims and tell you do this, they are fully aware they are lying to you. They are fully aware that they are deceiving you. Now I want to make this disclaimer again because I know people love to lie. I am not telling you your pastor is a liar and a deceiver and every prophecy that they say in is all lies. Because as we get into this book, you're going to be able to differentiate what is of God and what is not of God. And even in a few scriptures I'm going to give you today, which you will now, uh, God, Jesus has advised us to, to assess, judge, or to know them by their fruit. So these wicked, evil people that do these things, one of the main things they're going to do, they, they make sure to build a barrier immediately. They put themselves on high pedestal and have you call them all these different high title names and all these other things. And the reason for that is... Uh, building their own kingdoms in terms of how you address them, they make specific, you do not touch God's anointed. So immediately when you hear that, and you don't hear the scriptures which says that you will know them by their fruit, then you stop your ability from assessing them according to the word of God by their fruit. So even though they call themselves this name, super duper prophet, blah, 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 and you see they're doing a bunch of witchcraft stuff, you too afraid now to say, man, he's old witchcraft, I ain't no man of God, because, because now, they deceitfully come at you and use scripture. Do not uh, touch God's anointed. But the truth is you are not God's anointed. So the scripture is saying to you, you, you can make an assessment, you can make a judgment by their fruit. They are claiming Jesus, they are claiming that they are a child of God and so on and so forth, but they are never mentioning Jesus in their deliverance. They're saying stuff like huff, huff, poof, poof, out, out, get out, demon, what your name is? No, in the name of Jesus, no scriptures, no teaching. And whenever there's teaching, it's always leading to a financial gain from you. So listen to this now. Preparing to travel to Nigeria. When my visa was approved, I looked forward to the day when I would, when I would board an international flight for the very first time. It is a pity that my first flight travel was for the wrong reasons. As I was pre preparing for my trip, I had already prepared my wife that I would be visiting Nigeria for prayer and an international pastor's conference, lies. And since she wanted the best for me, she supported me and wished me well as I would be traveling. She was not aware that the sole mission of my trip was to obtain quote-unquote powers. All my Christian life, I never thought I would be tempted to the point of succumbing to the pressure of a life like that. Virtualist I wanted to visit told me to send more money as he had to buy things for my consultation. I promised to send the money the following day since, the, since he sounded eager to help me. He promised to buy powerful 
quote unquote cleansing items. Now, I want you all to get this, you know. I, I, I don't want to rush through this because this is a man of God. This is a man who preached to the people of God. This is a man who's going to christen your children. This is a man who's going to lay your dead loved ones to rest. This is the man who's going to put his hand on you and pray for you. He is now revealing to us that he is going to go to a, a witchcraft practitioner. Clearly, God isn't sufficient for him. Clearly, he's overcome by the material and sensationalism of his counterparts. That he's going to go to a voodoo worker, a santeria priest, a, a spiritist, for them to initiate him. And he's about to take a spiritual blood, which is now going to cleanse him of the things of God for them to impute their demons, their evil spirits, to perform these evils. Now, why are you saying this, Kevin? Because the same dude who you don't know did what he did is going to come back and he's going to call you and prophesy and you're going to receive this demonic prophecy. The same dude is going to say, you sick, come here. He's going to put his hand on you. He's going to tell you, drink this, do this, do all this other stuff. You have no idea that you are engaging with someone who is an agent of the devil. So this is why Jesus said in his word, he says, now listen to here. Beware of false prophets. He, he made it clear. He says, because they're going to come to you there as sheep. They're going to come, I mean, they got the whole uh, Holy Ghost dance. They got the whole, hallelujah, Jesus, I feel this in my spirit. I, I hear God say, uh, God say to tell you, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. How are you going to tell the difference, whether this is a man of God or not? Well, this is why I keep saying to you over and over and over and over and over again, I don't care how much you love me. I don't care how much you love your pastor, your apostle. Your greatest acquaintance should be with the word of God. Why? For two reasons. Number one, you're associating yourself with the rules. Number two, the Holy Spirit is it's much more easy for the Holy Spirit to communicate to you, to bring those scriptures to mind when the red flags begin to present themselves. This is not of God. This is not of the Holy Spirit. This is not of the Godhead. But those who don't and only rely on what this dude said on this pulpit, and they have made this person their God, then whatever they tell them, they succumb to. So years, 20, 30 years in this place, no miracles, no turnarounds. All they hear is, you under my covering, you under my apostolic this. No progress have you made. But there's this spell on you because of your commitment to them. According to uh, Jeremiah 17 and 5, what does it say? When you make the commitment to them and not God. Cursed be the man that puts his trust in man and make flesh his arm or his strength. For he shall be like the heat in the desert and wouldn't even know when good come to him. So these are the things that's happening. You don't know. You, you mind you. Mind you, your intentions are real. You want to have an encounter with Christ. You want a real life. You want to see your children prosper, you prosper. You want to enjoy your days in heavenly bliss while you're here. But that will never happen under these vultures, under these demonic devils. And the whole purpose of this teaching is to open your eyes. Stop putting your trust in people. Put it in God. This does not mean to disrespect your leader. This does not mean to say all pastors are evil, all prophets are liars. No! What I'm trying to get you to do is point you back to the scriptures. So I'm using this man's story to show you one who been there, one who did these things to people to show you how they do it and to convince you even more to stick with the word of God. Nowhere in the word of God, another human who is not sin free could be your covering. He or she is a mere mortal exposed and subject to sin and have to ask for God's forgiveness just like you. So how could you who full of sin could cover me? And then when I say to them, Jesus is my covering, who is sinless, that's a problem. So you see how much how brainwashed they are already. So they're, they're, these are the ones who are candidates to fall under the spell of what this guy is about to reveal to us right now. Let me get into this because I really want to get into these scriptures. Okay. So he said, I promised to send the money the following day since, the, since he sounded eager to help me. He promised to buy powerful cleansing items with the money before my arrival. 
Baba Lola believed that one should be cleansed first before the actual occult initiation. Listen to that. This guy have no idea, man. Lord, boy, I tell you, I so thank God for this book here. All of that, this is obviously a spiritual bath. And I have spoken to you on many times about this. Whenever you take a spiritual bath, you are literally, literally exchanging your destiny. You are literally being initiated into the world of darkness. But they're not going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you. But, but listen to what he tell him. He tell him you have to take the bath before the initiation. My friend, this is the initiation you're doing. This is the initiation. All of those herbs and all, that's the demonic concoctions. And all they're seeking here is the covenant between you and them. What is the covenant? You agree to take this part. You agree to use this soap. You agree to drink this concoction. So immediately, you are, you are under a spell already. So everything they tell you from this point now is going to be even more true to you. This is why the Bible said to us in Leviticus 19 verse 31. It says that you must have no affiliation with witches. spirits and who are familiar spirits babaloa spiritualists voodoo priests all of these people secret societies whatever deity they're dealing with they have covenant with that deity this is why i said to you over and over you all come talk and mess but to me the other day but 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 i order order and so on your pastor your pastor is a secret society member ah your bishop is a secret so you coming at me i given you the word of god your apostle Apostle, whoever how you name him, is a secret society member. And this book is going to speak about that. And he on the pulpit preaching to you. He on the pulpit laying hands on you, but healing. Well, you all got to be crazy. You all got to be on the Almighty. Let me calm down because I, I tell you, boy, I tell you, we perish for a lack of knowledge here. And you still wondering why your life ain't going on. He has no problem. Okay? Showing his secret society regalia on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. He, because you know what? He got you all fooled. But yet you will come to me, a can I serve two masters, Kevin? Well, you should apply that to where you go to, to, to serve, quote unquote, God. Talking nonsense in my head. He goes on to say, he said, I promised to send the money. The following day, since he sounded eager to help me, he promised to buy powerful cleansing items with the money before my arrival. Believe that one should be cleansed before, first before the actual occult initiation. I was told that one of their members named General Otis, listen to this carefully. I was told that one of their members named General Tom would bring items to bathe with before arrival. This member used a military rank title. Listen carefully. Occult groups use titles and names according to ranks and levels of the individual in the group. Other occult groups use titles similar to military ranks. For example, commander, chief apostle, chief of staff, general or major. The more people you initiate under you, the more your... I was called general when I operated as a prophet. The spiritualist told me that the spiritual bath would remove all negative spirits fo following me. Yeah, right. And would make me a newborn person. Isn't it a lie they're telling him? Now, what they're about to do to him is only going to add to what was already there. But they're telling him the initiation or the spiritual bath is going to take it away from him. Boy, I tell you. The spiritualist told me that the spiritual bath would remove all negative spirits following me and would make me a newborn person. Occultism is a secretive religion with hidden knowledge. And this hidden knowledge must be kept a secret. Most people join occultism with a view that it is a church of God. The spiritual bath contains a collection of sacred, multi, and black soap. The magical ingredients were believed to remove evil spirits, which were claimed to be the cause of all misfortune in a person's life. You were required to bathe. Bath of the head symbolize cleansing, listen to this, cleansing of destiny. After bathing with the water, you were required to sprinkle the yard where you stayed with the dirty water. 
Please show me where Jesus did this. I was given time for the spiritual bathing. Occultism is governed by numerous rules and instruction. Datilio is one of the known South African terms. You do not act as you please. You obey orders. The occult world used the so-called spiritual bathing or baptism in the river as one of their initiation methods. I did a service in a particular country. I'm not going to call the name. And the service that I was doing was dealing on witchcraft, initiation, and so on. And uh, several of the, uh, after the service, several of the congregants uh, wanted to meet with me. And they were telling me about a particular uh, ministry that they went to where the husband and wife uh, uh, take them to the sea at strange hours at night and baptize them seven times. Now, now they already did their baptism and all this other stuff. Baptize them and will have dinner ceremonies and give each of them a ring and saying they're going to be married to the Holy Spirit. I say you all have, the, whoever these people are, are witchcraft workers. They are initiating you to their altars. They, they are bringing the quota that was made with the deities at the altars. Whatever powers they want, whatever healing or whatever luck they want, you guys would be the ransom for that. None of their lives was God advancing. None of them were going forward. How could it be when the scriptures are clear? It says in Leviticus 19 and 31, do not have any dealings with those who have familiar spirit, lest they defile you. What does the word defile? To corrupt, to change you from your original, to mix you up. The day came when I was seated. The day came when I was seated and busy with spiritual consultation in my shrine. Shrine meaning he has an idol that he consults when he's talking to the spirits, but these are not the spirit of God. Folks, please, are you hearing me? This is a man of God. This is a prophet. This is a preacher. You don't know none of this. When he mount that pulpit and he go through all of the rituals, all of the traditions, the Bible say that you must assess them by their fruit. And what is that? Are you reading your Bible? Are you studying the scriptures for yourself? Or only you are, are, are only you're going on what he say? Because if you are reading your Bible, then the Holy Spirit is saying to you, listen, Kevin, look up, look at what he's doing. Look at is is this my word? Is, Kevin, have I told you? To bring me money for the... Kevin, can you show me in the scriptures? Can you show me in the book of Mark where the, the guy who was possessed with devils, who was sleeping in the tomb, who was cutting up himself, show me where I healed him, Kevin, and I charged $600, Kevin. Show me, Kevin, in Mark chapter 1, when I was in the synagogue preaching, and there was a man where a demon manifested in him, and I cast the devil out of him. Kevin, now show me the pattern that I left. Did I say now that would be $200, and for further deliverance, it will be another four. Kevin, you will know them by their fruit. They were seated and busy with spiritual consultation in my shrine when the parcel from General Tom from the occult group arrived. This was the day Babalola called and asked if I received the spiritual cleansing package and instructions. I accepted the neatly wrapped box and did not want anyone, including my wife, to see what was inside the box as it was from a secret society. I took the bath that evening and it was a very terrible bath. I started to itch. The itching convinced me that the unclean spirit was being washed away. Immediately after bathing, I took the dirty water and sprinkled it around the yard. My flight was scheduled to take off that same evening. When we arrived in Nigeria, I started to think about how the media and the movie industry portrayed this country in a bad light as a very overcrowded and a dangerous country that practiced black magic to the core. The country was known for all notorious things like drugs, money, money laundering, human trafficking, and witchcraft. When I entered the country, I never thought those kinds of 
things would happen to me. Excuse me. Maybe my bravery was due to the fact that I was already under a powerful juju or witchcraft spell as I was already given black soap that was mixed with some strange smelling multi or sorry muti to bathe with a few weeks before the trip to Nigeria. This black soap was couriered from Nigeria to South Africa, and I received it by the Pope. Black soap was intended to cleanse me from all unwanted and evil spirits. But to my surprise, ever, ever since I started using the black soap, I never questioned my profit. So you see, whatever they give you, whenever they prophesy to you, whenever they speak over you, whenever they touch you, they shut in your soul ability to reason and, and question that is clearly questionable. This guy says, after he started using the soap, he couldn't question the man no more. He says, I started using the black soap. I never questioned my prophet friend who introduced me to this cultic kingdom of darkness. I never doubted that he had said, I never doubted what he said, and I was not aware that most of my decisions were forcefully manipulated by the evil force that was on the black soap. When I arrived at Murtala Mohammed International Airport after an eight-hour flight, I moved around and spoke like a zombie. Yeah, that's the spirits on you. And my will was already confined with... I had bathed with the black soap. The weather of that country was extremely hot and I thought I would die of heat or dehydration. I felt that I was far from home. We waited for a couple of hours for our luggage at the luggage carousel. I waited patiently with other passengers and it was during the waiting that I realized that most of the people were heading to a certain church that was popular in my country. I could hear some talking about the church and how it helped a lot of people from a country. When the bags took long to arrive, I started to panic and to be impatient. But my friend reminded me that this country was like so, was like so, but I must just uh, relax. So, I'm going to go here now to this last two pages. Listen to this carefully. When we arrived in the busiest city of, hold on, where am I now? I'm going to make sure I read this right to you. Okay. The following morning, we visited a particular priest who belonged to a certain cult known as a cult for priests. We were on a mission to visit most of these secret societies that give people powers and wealth. When we arrived at the house of one old man, who was also a priest in that occult, he welcomed us and made us feel at home. I then started to ask the priest about their cult and how one can affiliate. The priest told me how he had traveled on his spiritual journey for 20 years, searching for religious truth and enlightenment that took him through Christianity, the Islamic faith, and finally to this cult. This cult was a religion that had its own priests. One had to go through a spiritual initiation to be a member of the cult. I then asked him if it were possible to become a Christian pastor and secretly become a member of the cult. And the old man replied by saying, most people who are called Christian prophets have been initiated as priests of this cult in their country and still practice Christianity in their countries. I then asked if these two powers could fight each other. The old man with his white hair looked at me and said their cult was powerful and he kept on emphasizing that most pastors, prophets and bishops affiliated with their cult secretly and their churches grow at a very fast rate due to powers obtained from the cult. He said that a pastor is someone who is trained to know the Bible while the priests from their cult are trained into the fathers of all secrets. This old man knew how to of the cult, what kind of sacrifice to make, and how to prepare charms and spells. He said if a Christian pastor did not want to be caught with questionable charms, now let me explain what these charms are. Normally these would be like little beads around the wrists, or little stuff look like little rosaries on them. 
or their little things they will carry on their person, like a uh, uh, some kind of animal teeth on a chain or something at the edge of the bunch of keys, some rabbit foot or whatever the case may be. But things that may seem insignificant to you, these are what charms are. And charms are what you call a point of contact. Charms go wherever they are, then the spirits will be able to locate these people to perform whatever it is they agreed at the altars. Okay, you want to do some fake miracles? You want people to start acting like demons, speaking through them and spitting all over the place and, and like you talking to the demon? Well, that particular charm, a charm could also be, in most cases, where you will see the religious leader always wearing a specific color at every service that they do. It will normally be a red cloth, a red cloth shoes, a red handkerchief, a red towel. Why is this? Because the agreement that they made at the altar, after all the initiation and everything, right? The spirits will say, okay, now this is what we need you to do. Because this here is a part of the agreement. Have this red cloth. Some services, they will tell you, and, 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 and some of these services will say, okay, if you come in there for the first time, they'll tell you, now, if you come and make, make sure you wear a red shirt or a red tie or whatever. And you'll be like, for what? You know, just, just wear it, you know, that to, and they'll throw you off. You know, that's to represent Jesus' blood. Then when you get there, as soon as you get there, you see a basin with water in it. And they want you to dip your feet in it or whatever. If they don't do that, they will take you to the beach and tell you, uh, unknowing to you, ignorantly being initiated. They're not going to tell you that. They're going to say we're into initiating you into the kingdom of darkness. Now, what you also don't know is that in order for these people to increase in their evil powers, and increasing in evil powers simply means that they're going to take on more evil spirits to do more tricks and stuff for them. So now there's a quota that the altar would give them. Okay, we, we, we could upgrade this, but you need to bring at least 60 souls here. So this is what they say now God is telling me. So most of these services... Depending on where they have in the services will determine the branch of witchcraft they're dealing with. And in countries that are normally surrounded by coastal waters such as the Bahamas, such as the Caribbean, you will normally find them doing this wickedness by the beach or bodies of water, mainly by the beach. And they will say to you, they will start off going off in tongues. I hear the Spirit of the Lord, blah, 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 Quote, unquote, they're speaking in tongues, right? The truth is they're communicating with the evil spirits. So the spirit of this point, they would have already told the people who's coming there for healing, deliverance, to get their marriages, their husband back, their boyfriend, all that. They would have said, bring a picture, or bring this or bring that. And at a certain point in the service, they would say to you, now take what you brought and now throw it in the water. All of this here, you have no idea that you are volunteering. You are now coming in an agreement. There's a covenant spiritually being forged between you, between that spirit, that altar, and whoever picture you bring there, whether it's your husband, your boyfriend, your children, for whatever reason, when you would have done what they told you to do, my friend, it's all over for you. You have just volunteered to become a part of this. You, don't, you have zero idea. And the proof of this, to prove to you what I'm saying, there is no way they're going to tell you to do that and not require some kind of funding from you. Holy Spirit say, give me this or, or you'll have to pay this. The only people you pay is witch doctors. That's the first red flag. You keep, oh, why are you constantly having these, 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 these services by the water? Why we have, we already been baptized. Why, why you have to baptize me seven? Why I have to wear this particular ring or this particular, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to take a spiritual bath like this man said and then take the, the, the water from that bath in the tub and pour it around my house? Why do I have to go to a four-way crossing, say a certain something and drink something or spin around? Or, because what they're doing, listen to me, let me explain this to you all because you all need to be clear on this. A four-way crossing, Kevin, what does that represent? What does that mean? Whatever, if you couldn't have a baby or whatever it is that you couldn't do and they tell you, Take this concoction, drink it, or recite this at a four-way crossing. What is a four-way crossing? It's an intersection. But spiritually, what that represents is the east, the west, the north, and the south. 
So when you go there, because remember, the reason why they're telling you this is because this is the consultation that the practitioner, which is the witchcraft worker, received from the spirits at that altar. Tell Kevin, go to the four-way crossing. Really happening. The spirits from the east, the west, the north, and the south, and all points in between. They are, you cannot see them, but they are all coming there to now come in agreement with the ritual that you are following that was advised by the practitioner. You have zero idea the devils that you are taking on, and you mark from that day forward, you're going to watch your life go downhill at 100 miles per hour, and anyone who's linked up to you, particularly your children. So any, why is the pastor, why is this evangelist, why is this prophet and prophetess telling you to believe, to show you I'm from God, God say, take this salt, and God say, get the olive oil, and God say, mix it up and get some water from the sea, and God say, put it around the borders of your house, or get the salt and put it in the four corners of your house. I hear the Lord say, get, why can't you give me scriptures? Why can't you say, let's pray? quote God word back to him. Why aren't you not telling me that? You know why you're not telling me that? Because you're a witchcraft or be a worker. That's what you are. Under the guise of prophetess and prophet and pastor and evangelist. People are trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. Many of you have been caught in this. Look at your life. Look at your life. Look at your life and look at these thieves who've been telling you to do these things. Look at their life. Robin, going from place to place, placing curses on people, stagnating your life, spiritual restrictions and limitations on you. And you have zero idea. You know what? I ain't going to afford this book because I need to get into scriptures right now. So we can pick up on that. I just wanted to, wanted to read to you. I just wanted to read to you exactly uh, what, what are these cats dealing with right now. Like, I want to go to some scriptures now. I want to go to some scriptures now, okay? I want to go to some scriptures. So let me get my little iPad here because I'm going to show you some stuff here. I'm going to show you some stuff. And I'm going to show you a scripture, a scripture that I, I uh, used last night, okay? So let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Folks, all I'm trying to do is open your eyes. Okay, that fool who sat next to you and tell you don't listen to Kevin, rebuke them right now. Because there's nothing I'm going to say to you that I'm not going to give you a cadre of scriptures to show you. Why am I showing you this? Why is Kevin so adamant about the scriptures? Why are you always trying to pound the scriptures in my mind? Two, I'm showing you what is the benchmark. The scriptures are what you are going to do to judge them. God says that you can judge from a spiritual, righteous perspective. How is that, Kevin? You judge them by their fruit according to the word of God. If God says that lying is a sin and they are lying and you call them a liar, are you judging them? No, the word judging them because you didn't write the rule that lying is wrong. Oh, so let's go to 2 Corinthians. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and we're going to read from verse 13 to verse 14. All right? And this is Paul talking to the church of Corinth. See, you need to know the word. And that's how you can expose these, these hypocrites, these stage actors, these, these performers. That's what they are. 2 Corinthians 11, beginning at verse 14. Paul says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming or changing themselves into the apostles of Christ. Verse 14. And no marvel, or don't be surprised, for Satan himself is transformed from an angel of light. So basically what the scriptures are saying is, don't mind these false prophets. They're only duplicating or imitating what they saw their leader doing, which is Satan who has the ability to transform himself as an angel of light. So his, his, his so-called agents, because they've been watching, remember now what, what Jesus said. He says, beware now, for truly they come to you as sheep, who is he talking about? The false apostles, the false prophets, the so-called uh, uh, major prophet, boss prophet, chief apostle to the third power, go down the road, hike right, cross by uh, uh, eight mile rock corner, take a left uh, uh, apostle. Why, why all of this? Why all of this? So he says here, don't be surprised for Satan himself is able to transform into an angel of light. Therefore, verse 15, therefore, it is no great thing 
if his ministers, who's the his? Satan. There's no great thing of Satan's ministers. What does the word minister mean? Satan servant. They are serving who? Satan. There is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed or changed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. God can deal with them in so much words. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. Folk, don't be stupid. Don't be ignorant. Don't let them, when you shall see their, their, the kings and their arm and the wickedness, don't let them throw on you or touch not God's anointed. How could you talk about the man? See, that's how a lot of you are still in bondage. Because you truly think they are God's anointed. When scripture has given us the blueprint to uncover the mask, the masquerade, that these vultures, okay, robbing you weekly, deceiving you, laden you with crisis through their so-called, uh, anyone who tell you that this is a good time to sow into their anointing. How do you do that? How do you sow into somebody anointing? Tell me how you do that. Better yet, let's see if we could see a pattern in Jesus' ministry, which he left for all of us to follow. Let's see if we could see where did Jesus tell Peter? Where did Jesus tell Paul? Where did Jesus tell Matthew, Bartholomew? Where did Jesus tell James or Thomas? Now listen, I'm the super Jesus. Now come, 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 so into my ministry. Sorry, so into my anointing. How do you do that? Witchcraft, oh bear, voodoo. That's where you do those things. Those things have no place in the things of God. Now watch this now. I just showed you in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 verse 14, right? 13 to 15. Where the Bible makes it clear that there are false prophets. Jesus made it clear in Matthew that there are false prophets. There are fakes to the originals. And the scriptures are advising us how to recognize these dogs. That's what they are. To how to recognize these, these agents of unrighteousness. But no, not you. You so gung ho. You you under you so no not my apostle, not my bishop, not my pastor. He, I never said it was your pastor. I am saying to you, stop being gung ho, and and assess them according to the word of God. Let's go. Let me show you some deeper stuff. Let's go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus chapter seven. Exodus chapter 7, beginning at verse 7, and we're going to read to verse 12. Exodus chapter 7, beginning at verse 7. See, you got to know people. If you don't know, you, you know how many people wasted 20, 30 years in a church that have absolutely nothing to do with God? Nothing! All their life, they beg you for money, just for the building fund, just for the tricycle fund, just for the, uh, the last and size in your mouth fund. Every fund, everybody having fun, they accept you. Not only that, you have been told that they're getting ready to build this church to sow. God said sow, and Jesus said to do this. Where is the building, sir? Where is it? And seeing that you are a man of God and there is no building, could you kindly at least refund me a portion of the money that you told me you were going to build the church with? There is no church. There is none of what you said. Could you kindly give me some of my money back? No. No, you can't ask them that because they're going to jump at you with their arrogance. Okay? Like you as Buffoli, you don't got no sense, and you must just take what they say. How much longer are you going to sit under these things, never using your talent, don't know why you're here, don't know what your purpose is? You, how are you going to stand before God when you die and face the judgment? And God, Yuck, or his book and says, okay, play that video. This is with Sally. Sally, you were supposed to win soul. Sally, you were supposed to travel to the Polynesian islands. I've put things in place for you to travel to Brazil. All of these places based on the gift I've given you to decree, to declare my word. Sally, I said to you in my word over and over, you will know them by their fruit. I've said to you in my word, beware of false prophets. I've said to you in my word that Satan have his fake apostles. And I, I said, Sally, I said to you in Jeremiah 17 and 5, do not put your trust in no man. Okay, yes, they could be your pastor. Yes, they could be your leaders. There's nothing wrong with that. But they must be leading you to me. If they're not leading you to me, get from underneath them. Because the purpose of me putting them there is for them to direct you to me. 
So explain to me, because based on what I've placed in you, based on my records, based on my plan for your life before the foundation of the world, there were supposed to be 10,000 souls, one under the ministry I've placed in you. No, you wasn't supposed to have no church, but what I've placed in you, because of the invent of social media, I have anointed you to go on every platform possible to decree my word. Sally, have you done that? Oh, no, no, I couldn't leave because... Bishop didn't release me. I couldn't relieve, you know, believe because you know, in, 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 in our diocese, you have to be at least sitting under one of the apostolic first Episcopal, take a right and make a left corner. Uh, uh, your highness, he have to ordain you. And Sally, did you read my word? Have I not ordained you already? Did I not leave clear instructions and say, go into the world and preach my gospel? Sally, I'm trying to help you here, but the more you talk, the more you believe in men more than you believed in me. The more you talk, the more I could see where you worship the men as opposed to worshiping me. The more you talk, I see where you succumb to their tactics, their lies, their hypocrisy, their deceitfulness. Sally, look, at, look over here, Sally. This is what your life's supposed to be like. You're supposed to be a married woman with a good godly man with beautiful children with seed that is now re doing what you was doing more than what you did. They are now preaching. This is what's supposed to happen to you. Look at you. Look at your life. You're dead now, Sally. You're 60 years old. You're deceased, okay? You never got married. You never had no children. You sat under some clown all your life telling you nonsense. Look at life on earth you all of the things i had in place for you had you followed my word you didn't do that you follow this joke over here you follow this thief this liar who robbed you for years that's who you follow look where you are now you stand before me and i cannot say to you well done thou good and faithful servant sally you got to go to hell like everybody else who follow your pattern as much as i don't want you to go there i speak to someone today I speak into someone today. Stop servicing. My God did not call you, not call you to worship no Kevin, your teacher. God did not call you to worship no His Grace Apostle Garbage. He called you to worship His Word. He called you to respect His Word, to know His will, to know what He has called you to do because there's going to be a day of reckoning. He did not call you to furnish the lifestyle of some jet set preacher. Talking foolishness. The Bible says here in Exodus chapter 7, God sent Moses and his brother Aaron, Aaron who was the priest, okay, to Pharaoh. Pharaoh was an Egyptian Pharaoh. And they didn't serve the Lord thy God. They were deeply entrenched and rooted in es esoterics. What is esoterics? Metaphysics. What is metaphysics? Witchcraft. Voodoo. Obel. Santeria. That's what they, they dealt with the spirits. Watch this. This is why you got to know them by their fruit. The Bible says here in Exodus 7, beginning at verse 7, And Moses was fourscore years old, or he was 80. And Aaron fourscore and three, or 83, when, when they spoke unto Pharaoh. Verse 8, it says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, excuse me, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, when Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle, sorry, show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. Now, before we go any further, and this is why these things you really got to know. See, back then, you couldn't roll up on a fella like Pharaoh them. Those are uh, uh, Egyptians or the Canaanites and come, but God send you. We need days like that now. No, 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 no. They can say, because in their mind, prove to us, whoever God you're dealing with, will you, you show us what you're dealing with. So they're going to ask for, show us a miracle, show us a sign. Show it to us. Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, only an adulterous and evil nation will ask for signs. So he's basically referring to people like, because we, we, we didn't tell no talk here. What obey you dealing with? Because we can show you what we're dealing with. But let's see what you got there first. So he said to him, he says, show a miracle for you. Verse 9 of, of Exodus 7. 
Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take the rod, or take thy rod, and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants. And just like the Lord said, it became a serpent or it became a snake. I love this piece right here. I love this. Because that time, sitting on his throne like, this, 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 this would you come to convince me, but your God tell you to let the people go because you did this? First, say, boy, could y'all please go get I obey people, please, because these dudes don't know they deal with it. Listen to this, verse 11 of Exodus 7. Then Pharaoh called his wise men, sorcerers, magicians of... Who do you think these people were? Huh? You think they were apostles and prophets and bishops? No! See, 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 Pharaoh was in play, okay? He deal on the dark side. That's what he dealt with. He wasn't hiding nothing. This is what I'm dealing with right here. Okay, now you didn't show me what you had to get my magician. Go get my wise men. Go get my sorcerers. Tell them, come, call on the spirits of the river. Call on the spirits of the forest. Come, come show these dudes that what they just do here, we can do the same thing. Listen to this. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their what? Enchantment. What is enchantments? Enchantments is rituals and ceremonies that they would perform, calling up the spirits to actually do the very tricks that they require right now. Spirits, can you, we need you all to mimic what Moses and Aaron just did. Because I don't know if they think they can convince us when this is the norm for us. Why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because if you are indoctrinated with garbage that's coming from your pulpits, and when I say garbage, let me be clear here. I'm talking about that preaching and teaching everything except the scriptures. See, only the scriptures can make you decipher what is authentic and what is fake. But if you go in all throughout life, preach your pastor, preach your brother Kevin, boy, my teacher Kevin this, boy, I like hearing Kevin. I don't care if you like hearing me. Are you subscribing to the word of God? Because the day is going to come where you're going to have a Pharaoh, Moses, and Aaron situation. And how are you going to be able to outdo your enemies? Or how are you going to be able to decipher if this is a true man or woman of God or this is an agent of the devil? You cannot do that by rehearsing the nursery rhymes your leader is telling you. Double for your trouble cannot tell where a demon is. Spin around seven times cannot tell you where demon is. 2020 is a year of 2020 vision. Cannot tell you what is evil and what is whatever. You know what tells you that? The word of the living God. That's why I keep saying to you, if they're not pointing you in that direction, they are agents of the devil. Let's be clear. Because agents of Jesus Christ represents Jesus Christ in every area, particularly as it relates to pointing his people, his sheep, his bride, to his what? To his word. Get out of that garbage. So the scriptures are very clear. It says in verse 12, it says, For they cast down every man his rod. Who is this every man? The magicians, the sorcerers, and the wise men. And they became serpents. What is the day? The staff or the rods that they threw on the ground all became serpents. However, but Aaron's rod swallowed them up. And that is how we were able to know that God was greater than these Obia workers over here. But in your case, how would you know? If, if, the, if, the, if, your, if your rod couldn't eat up theirs, even if you got that far, how, how could you tell? Let me, let me ask you this right now. How would you be able to tell if a false prophet came to your church right now that that is indeed a false prophet? How would you be able to tell? Because I'm going to tell you how you will not be able to tell because of what has been indoctrinated into you. And here's what I mean by that. Indoctrinated, the, the rules and regulations of men. What is that? Everything is about seed. If that dude, before he come on, he wants seed, while he ministering, he wants seed. After he finish, he wants seed. If he prophesied to you and said, only, he said, God wants to do this for you, but you have to sow a sacrificial seed, a first fruit seed, or the Lord is telling 
him to tell the members of the church and all that he's prophesied to. God says to give the pastor your first week paycheck, give him your month salary. That is a charlatan. That is a, a that's a two tongue snake, slow belly devil. That's what it is. Because I'm saying that and I am confident to say it because there was absolutely no patterns in the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Moses, Isaac, Jacob, Ezekiel, Hosea, Obadiah, Paul, Jesus, Matthew, Thomas, James. Which one of them? Tell me, please. Show me anybody right now, called up right now, where you see when they minister to people, they told them they have to sow a seed. When it's time to heal, you have to sow a seed. Spin around. God says, if you sow a hundred, show if it was so important. Why cannot why can't we see a pattern of this? Why? Why? You know why? Because it's a man-made tradition. And that is why you're not excelling. That is why you, because you put your trust in these dogs, these evil beings, these slow belly actors, these performers. The scripture, Jesus called them this. He said they are, 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 are wolves in sheep clothing. They have studied you. They know what type of music to play. They know when to tell the fellow on the guitar and on the band, slow it down a little because the presence of the Lord is in here. Hallelujah. And I hear God say that there are tiny people in here with $6 trillion. God say, if you got to teeth the money, bring it to us right now and you will see that thing change in your life. Young man, come here. That God said there's something special about you. How much longer are you going to buy into this dung? How much longer are you going to trample over the unadulterated word of God and succumb? How much longer are you going to hold these people up in esteem, these enemies of righteousness? How much longer are you going to dismiss the word of God coming from a Kevin or anybody else who's literally preaching the scriptures because pastor said go this way. Pastor said it's supposed to go this way. Don't listen to Kevin them. Kevin all about bashing us. Kevin all about tearing down. Kevin bringing divide against us. Well, if that's what Kevin is doing, your pastor doing voice because he's feeding you a false gospel. Ask your pastor tomorrow. Pastor, you're collecting tithe. Are you a Levite? Pastor, you're telling the members of this church they got to pay tithe. Are the members of this church from the tribe of Benjamin? Are the members of this church from the, tithe, the tribe of Simeon? Are they from the tribe of God? Are they from the tribe of Judah? Are they from the tribe of Joseph? Which tribe are they from? To the Israel people. Listen to me carefully. These are the scriptures. This is the law of God. He says, now listen here. When you go into that promised land, the covenant I am making with the Levite, the Levitical order is where the priesthood will be established. And now I am making a covenant with all Israel and them that the 11 tribes will give a 10th portion of their tithe to who? To the Levite or the Levitical priesthood. They are not to own no inheritance in Canaan as an exchange of collecting the tithe. Show me how you get in there. Who, who made your pastor your pastor from Cat Island, your pastor from New Orleans, your pastor from England, tell him, tell her, show me your lineage, sir, show me your lineage, ma'am. How did you get connected huh, to be a Levite, to collect tithe? Tell me, how? You see, if I didn't read the word covenant, then I would have let that slide. But when I hear covenant, it changed everything for me. How? Now, is Kevin telling you don't pay your tithe? I tell you to do that. I, I ain't going to tell you don't pay no tithe. I telling you what the scriptures say, you know. I am saying to you, because we are looking at the conditions in which the structure of the tithing was supposed to be done. We're nobody being legalistic here. And not only that, oh, let, me, let me take it back a little bit more. Okay, a part of the tithe. This can shock a lot of y'all right now. Because this is, and I'm telling you, those who are telling you these things are lying to you. They are not being honest because they know better. You don't have to be a theologian to figure these things. So go right there in the scriptures and read it. Go right there. Well, anyway, you, you better start reading it to your, your members because I can lay it all out to next week. Go in the scriptures and read it. 
If you want to collect the tax, you illegal Levite, then why aren't you telling them? Because according to those scriptures, a part of the Titus, you had to bring strong drink and wine. Why didn't you tell them when you bring the tide? Could you bring a six pack of Heineken? If you want to, if you want to go by the tide, why didn't you tell them bring a bottle of uh, 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 vodka with them? Why didn't you tell them that? Because in the Levitical law, as it relates to the eleven tribes giving of their tent, included in that was strong drink. Included in that was vegetables and sheep and livestock and so on. Why are you not telling them that? Why? Why? Fake Levite. Now, they say, Kevin, I hear you. You make a little bit of sense there. But let's be real, Kev. How are the pastors supposed to get paid? Exactly like it said in Corinthians. You will see, the, see, what the tide does for most of them is a safety net. Where you can put it where you see. Now, remember now, it says that if you don't pay the tide. Now, listen, people, listen to this. How much time I got here? Okay, I got a good time before I get to my last scripture. Listen to this for one second. Just for one second, right? All your life you was told when it's time to collect tithe and offering. They can spin Malachi 3 verses, uh, I think, 8 to 10, right? And what do they tell you? In fact, let me turn it there. I got to turn it there because I won't read it because every human being that ever been to church should know the scripture. And any time it's time to pick up tithe, listen to what they say, Malachi 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have you robbed thee? In tithes and in offering. Then he says, this is what the pastor can say to you now, it ain't me. It ain't me. The scriptures say you rob God. And the scripture tell you why. Now, this is the pastor talking to you now. And the scripture says, you have robbed God and tithe and offering. Now, now, members, I'm telling you now, if you're not paying that tithe and if you're not giving God, not only that, members, listen to this, because this is what I try to save you all from. This is what I can tell you now, like they're on your side. Verse 9 of Malachi 3 says, ye are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord, I feel so guilty now. I feel so guilty. I see why my finances ain't working out. Oh, man. Listen to verse 10. Because he can show you how to fix it now. Now they can come on now. You see, oh, I thank God for God. He's such a loving God that even when we mess up and we don't pay that tithe, God is going to put things in place to, to, to restore us. And in verse 10 of Malachi 3, he says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here, which say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there wouldn't even be room enough. So all of you all who have been paying the tithes should be living in abundance, not according to the scripture, but according to what they told you the scripture said. Right? But some people decide to go and take it from the beginning. Malachi 2. Malachi 2 at verse 1 says, And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. Oh, and I want you to read it because Malachi 3 verses 8 to 10 have absolutely nothing to do with us. Zero. Why? Because Malachi, the prophet, was speaking to the priests of the Levitical order of Israel who violated the covenant according to Nehemiah 10 verse 38 somewhere around doing what they were supposed to do with the tithe. So there were no meat in their house. Because you know, Deuteronomy tell you, the first and second year of the Levites are supposed to eat up the tithe. And the third year is when, uh, I, let me can explain it on the next week. So on the, in the third year, they were supposed to take a portion of the tithe, right? The next tenth goes to do a heave offering to God. And the rest of it was to feed the strangers, the widows, so on and so forth. They were not doing that. Neither were their forefathers. So Malachi, as an oracle of God, is saying to the priests, he said to the priests, not you, now you understand, I've been so entire, I've been given tithe, and I never see no windows of heaven open, and you ain't gonna never see it either because you ain't no Levite priest, that's why. He said to the priests, the Levite priests, because the only way you could be a priest according to this tithing system of the Old Testament, a pre you cannot say, I cannot say my name is 
Levi Kevin. No one could ordain me, Levi Kevin. You are ordained to be a pastor. You could be ordained to be an apostle. You could be ordained to be a teacher, whatever. To be a Levite, it has to be through the, to, through the bloodline. Now, if we really want to be real, I keep telling you this. If you really want to go according to the tithing system, which you should not be going by, but going to the New Testament system, then the truth is, if we really want to be real, we, need, we should be sending our tithes to Israel to the true bloodline of the Levitical order to a Levitical priest, according to how it's mentioned. Not only that, when we go to Deuteronomy 14 again, take your time and read it, even in the tithing system back then, you never were supposed to give tithe off of every increase that you have, like you tithe off of every paycheck you get today. It shows you what you're doing the first year, the second year, the third year. So with every salary you make, you must give tithe on that. Show it to me. What am I saying to you? Can't, let me be clear here, because I know these liars. I am not saying to you, do not pay your tithe. You could do what you want to do. You're an adult, okay? What I am showing you is a system that will give you more than what the tide was giving you. I don't have time to go into that, but you can go and watch my videos on God's economy, number one and number two, which makes it very clear. I give you all the scriptures, and the majority of the scriptures has to do with giving to the poor. Giving to, listen to me, if you follow the rule in, I think, first or second Corinthians chapter nine, your pastor will be getting more than the 10% that he was demanding from you. Your pastor is restricting him and yourself when you stick with the 10%. Why? Because he says, so as you give, so shall you receive. So if you got $100,000, and according to the New Testament, God says, give according to your heart, and he's the one who's perking your heart. This is his economy. So he know how much wood Kevin need. He know what Mary need. He know what Sally need. So he says, Kevin, I need you to sow X amount. You got 100,000? Sow 50,000 in Sally life. Okay? Do this, do that. Now why? God said, don't become amazed at how much I tell you. Give. Remember the, the, the correlation between your giving and receiving. I said to you, I gave you the measurement. If you sow sparingly, you will reap. If you sow grudgingly, you will reap likewise. But if you sow bountifully, you shall also reap bountifully. For I, God, am a cheerful giver, and I am able to make all of what you see to be, you will never be broke. You will always have sufficiency. And when I recognize you as one who is always giving when I give you, he said, I will now label you as a sower. Then he says this, I will now minister or serve seed, not to anybody. I told you who, 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 who I will give it to, to the sower. So those who ain't getting is because I have already determined they are not sowers. Ten. Well, pastor ain't no Levite. How you can tell you that? And you are, not of, uh, you are not of any of the other 11 tribes. So how are you getting that? Why are you so adamant to follow that Hebrew rule back then that they were assigned to do, and you do not want to follow the New Testament rules that was laid out for you? Why don't you give to the poor? God says if you give to the poor, you lend it unto God, and he shall repay you. The Bible says in verse 24 to verse 25, what does it say? It says, he that give it or he that scatter it shall increase. He that holds on to what he needs shall surely come to poverty. Verse 25 says that the liberal or the free soul or the one who's always giving shall be made fat or be wealthy. And he that water it or always giving shall one day be watered or someone will give to him. Why aren't you following that? Why aren't you following, sorry, Psalms 41 verses 1 to 3. Blessed is he that consider the poor for the Lord will help him in his time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive and not turn him over to the will of his Lord will help him in his time. Why are you not following that? You know why? Because all you're being told, sow that tithe. Make sure you give that tithe. Give that, give that special seed. Give that, 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 that seed. Why? Why are you so easy to succumb to these hocus pocus, but you never ever succumb to the word of the living God? Well, I can tell you this, like I've been telling you in my other series, everyone I have shared that to, everyone, including myself, 
is prospering in abundance today. And they will continue to prosper as long as they participate in the economy of God. Kevin, what is the economy of God? Nothing that you get, you own. That's how you need to look at it. Whatever I get, I am open for what God telling me to release this to. God may seem to give my pastor 10,000. See, there's no limitation. See, he want to be safe. Oh, you got to give that 10. Now you got to, you know, we got to pay the church like you got to, you know, got insurance. I don't care what we have. I will move how God tell me move. Gone are the days where you put no pressure on me because all of that was in disobedience to God. No, get that garbage out of here. So I'm trying to show you not to cause controversy because there is no controversy with the word of God. And if you disagree with what I'm telling you, you are disagreeing with the scriptures. And if any pastor want to challenge me, I, I dare them. Who, maybe clear before I go to my last scripture. If you're going to tell me who, according to the God you serve, and I hope it's the Lord Jesus Christ God, according to the God you serve, who were instructed to give the tithe to who? And what were the conditions? Pastor, you can be a fake Levite if you're collecting tithe, because that's what you are. You cannot be a Levite and still own property because, if, again, if you want to go by the tithing system, you got to go all the way through. You got you to gotta deal with the strong drinks. You got to deal with, you can't own no property. So whatever properties you own, you should confess that to the membership and say, now listen, I finally see that I can stick with the tithe. I can't double dip. I can't double dip. So I can continue with the tithe now. But what I can also do now, all of that uh, property in Bohemia, all that property I get downtown, I decide that I'm going to sell it and then I'm going to spread the money amongst the congregants. Let me see them do that. Let me see them do that. Let me see you do that. Because the Levitical order was clear to them, you will own no, you will have no inheritance or no land. You cannot have that. And, and God says, what I'm going to replace that with is that they are going to have to now tie to you. So don't come with that. Let me look at my last scripture here now. Let's go to... Revelation chapter 16, because I'm teaching you in this series, stop judging them by their titles. Stop saying that's teacher Kevin and I like him. Stop saying that's his grace, her grace, their grace, whatever. Stop saying that's Dr. Reverend Apostle, right hand drive, whatever. Stop it. Because immediately when you do that, you have just invited the spirit of deception to your life because you are violating the laws of God. God saying, forget their titles. Forget who they are. I want you to judge them by what they're producing or judge them by their fruit. Make your assessment. If Kevin say he's a man of God, if Kevin say he's about Christ, then everything that Kevin says should be backed by the word of God. Kevin should be speaking more about the word of God on, excuse me, on any topic. He should be giving you scripture after scripture to support, okay, to identify with what he's talking about. But you can't say you're a mechanic. You ain't got no mechanic shop. You never do mechanic work. You do none of that. You, in fact, you, you in carpentry. How could you be a mechanic and you, you, you making a bench and chair and cabinet all day? How could you be a doctor when you don't know what a theater is? You don't know what a scalpel is. You, you don't, you don't, how could you? How? He said, you will know them by their fruit. Okay, well, I, you say you was a doctor, but you, there's no history of no surgery. You never even prescribe no medication, nobody. So I can't, I can't identify what you're saying to me. Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. If they say that they is prophet is so and so and, and the best prophet and boss prophet and the major prophet and the super duper prophet. Okay, good. Now, show us some evidence of that. And I ain't talking about your prophecies. How much of the word do you know? I ain't talking about the riddles. I ain't, I ain't talking about what you've been saying for years. God can give you double for your trouble. There'll be more green in 2019, 2020. I can see vision, whatever garbage. No. How much of the scripture can you tell me? Which script? Because Kevin is teaching us how to pray the scriptures. Kevin is teaching us that when we go on a genuine fast, gen, gen, uh, a genuine fast, according to Isaiah 58, Kevin say, and we read what he said. We have, he he insists that we go to the word, whatever he say. And Kevin said that you must do this and do that. Now, you ain't telling us none of that. you telling us that you just give us a prophecy and that we must sow a seed, okay? And then you tell us stupid garbage that no seed that, no seed that leave God's hand, leave our hand. We, we were hearing that. Give, could you please give us a scripture? You got them all locked up. They, get, I, 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 like they retarded now. Because no, they don't know no scripture. 
because they have been conditioned that the people of God are already conditioned by their leaders that whatever we say, you all go with that. Don't ever take what we say. We're never going to give you no scripture. You don't need no scripture. All right? Now, what is the final analysis? How do, when, whenever they see that crowd, and I said this last night, when they see that crowd aim biting in to what they want, so you, you, you go to the last tactic. And this one here is a, is, this is, this is a deal breaker right here. This here, well, not really a deal breaker, but this here can going to show you can get their attention. So what do you do? You now begin to prophesy. But not just prophesy anything. Uh, young lady, uh, come here, come here, come here. Stand up right here for me. Uh, God want to do a new thing in you. I see a new thing. So he's searching his mind now. That is if his familiar spirit isn't advising him, but probably his familiar spirit or taking a break now. So he'll take it from there. He said, the Lord is showing me, the Lord is showing me, oh, hallelujah, they are, they, I see enemies. I don't know, they're like bees around you. And I, like, I see like people talking about you. So she's starting to cry because everyone in the whole wide world have enemies. I don't know nobody who don't have any, right? But she's going to start to cry because he, he's kind of bringing up a scenario that is happening to everybody on their job. Their coworkers who don't like you and so on. And, and I see where... There was a promotion that was supposed to come to you, but 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 I see where there's a, a, a certain, so he, he don't want to say a certain person because it might be a group. He don't want to say a group because it might be a person. So this is what he said. I see a certain person or a group. Now, hold on now. If God's speaking to you, you should have the specific group or person. So he, he goes, play it safe now because he don't want you to say he's a false prophet or a false prophetess. So he's going to say, I see a certain group of person on your jaw, and I see, I, could, I see, I don't know, but I see HR. I see human resources. They somehow they in this. And it's like they're, they're turning against you. That's what I see. Hallelujah. But the Lord is telling me. So he's going to get loud now because he's now, he, he knows he's getting you riled up. The guy on the keyboard, he knows exactly when to kick in. And what she said, the Lord is telling me right now, the, the Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more. And what do you get now? Bah, 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 bah. Everybody acting like demons running all over the place. He's talking garbage. Because what I just did, anybody could do. God said you will know them by their fruit. God speaking to someone today. Enough, it's time to really have an acquaintance with the Lord Jesus Christ and not under this, this foolishness you've been under. But let's go to my last scripture because I time winding now. Props, Revelation 16, beginning at verse 13. Remember, we came off the heels of back there in Exodus chapter 7. Okay, and all of this coming right back to the books, church mafia. We had a man of God, the man of God. I mean, putting down every piece of training that he had of Bible school and Bible college to go and seek witchcraft, evil spirits, demonic powers to accentuate or to enhance church growth, finances, popularity, fame, and fortune. Willing to risk his eternal soul to impress the likes of mere mortals. You all hearing me? The same man on you. Ow, ow. No Jesus Christ. No by the blood of, not no scripture, no nothing. All of this is demonic behavior. So let's see what the Bible has to say about this. Revelation 16, beginning at verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs, mighty God, came out of the mouth of the dragon, which is the devil, out of the mouth of the beast, which is the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. My God. Now you know there's a holy trinity, you know that, right? God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. And this is how much the enemy mimics the things of God. So the enemy has a trinity also. The dragon, which represents him. The son of perdition or the antichrist. And who's the third one in that uh, demonic triune? The false prophet. Isn't that interesting? This is powerful because this is why now you just can't take scripture for just throw it on the side and just, no. Jesus said, beware of the apostle. No. Beware of the pastor. No, he didn't say that. Beware of the teacher, Kevin. No, he didn't say that either. Beware of the evangelist. No. What did he say specifically? Beware of the false prophet. Now, why? Because the false prophet is the last in the triune, the demonic trinity. 
I hope you're listening to me now. So this dude or this whomever they are, they're not coming there, but just they're coming there fully drenched, fully laced with demonic powers, evil demons. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. They looked like frogs. They weren't frog frogs. This was the likeness of the unclean spirits. But look where they came from, out of the mouth of the dragon the devil, the mother of the false prophets. So they're saturated with evil spirits. This is powerful. Yeah, I try my best to go to the next verse, but I just got to add this here. So that means when that false prophet prophesy over you, when that false prophet or prophetess put their hand on you and say, God is going to do this, and they hit you on your two hand and put the oil on you and spam, slap you all over the place and kick you on the floor and do foolishness and, and receive, receive now, now, not re receive, re receive it. And you have no idea. The mere fact that you came up there, you came in an agreement with them. But you didn't come in agreement with that physical person that's looking at you. John the Revelator is taking us behind the scenes. John the Revelator is taking us into the spiritual world. And now he is revealing through this revelation that even though that's a physical false prophet who looked like they couldn't hide a fly, he says, out of this, the mouth of this false prophet, I saw uh, frogs... Uh, evil spirit, sorry, in the likeness of fraud. You don't see it. Nobody else sees it. But John is saying, this is, what's come, this is what you're receiving. This is what you're coming in agreement with. Watch this now. Verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils. See, there's a reason. I brought you, and I'm going to end with this here today. I brought you here because not only can they prophesy evil over your life and you don't know, not only can they do little, listen, listen what he's about to say next, because it's the same thing in Exodus. That's why I took you to Exodus first. It's the same thing in the book of Corinthians when he said uh, they are fake and false apostles are masquerading as ministers of God. This is going to bring or put the icing on the cake. Revelation 16 says, For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles. My God. You all hear this? You all listen to this? Jesus, you telling me the devil entourage are capable of working miracles also? Kevin, why are you shocked? And I just had you show the people it in uh, Exodus chapter 7. This ain't nothing new. We go all the way back to the beginning. All the way in Exodus, you see it there, right? And you see it there, Kevin? So what were you so shocked about? So Jesus, you telling me that if I am not inclined to your word, there is a great possibility that I have in the past, I could now, and quite possibly in the future, succumb to what is seemingly a miracle, but strictly from the bowels of hell? Yes, sir. My God, my Lord. Boy, Jesus, I got to get no, I got to know more of you then. I got to know more. Let me read this again. Revelation 16, verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. You all listen to this? You all listening to this? Are you people listening to what I am telling you right now? You all hear this? I remember, I can share this story with you again right here because I got a lot to cover. We got a lot to cover next week. And just to give you some homework, uh, I can start next week with Acts chapter 8, verses 9 to 24. We're dealing with this old Simon, the sorcerer of Samaria. And we're going to read more of the book and again, but I can tie, just like how I tie the book in with these scriptures, but I can tie this section with the next piece I'm going to read next week. I remember years ago, uh, this had to have been like uh, the... This had to be like 2005 or 2004. And I remember I was invited to a miracle healing service at a, one of the popular churches here in, in Grand Bahama, right? There was this group uh, that came down from America. I know the pastor. In fact, he still comes on the Word Network, right? Black guy. And he came with his entourage. In all them men, oh, the fellas wearing purple suit, yellow suit, all kind of stuff. Anyway, the last night was the night that I was invited that I came. He told the people that particular night, he's asking them to bring uh, 
the gallon bottles empty or bring it with water and he will pray over it, right? And they could use it for healing. And as he said, this was the Lord told him. So before he got to that part of the service, because the whole pulpit was just full of these water bottles or whatever. I can't remember if they brought it or they had to come and get it or pay for it. I don't know. I don't want to lie on him. But I know all of them were extravagantly dressed in these high yellow suits, the men that is, high blue suits. It almost looked like a mob. Anyway, he was calling people out of the crowd. I'll come in. I'll never forget this lady because she was a good friend of mine, very good friend of mine. So he called her up. Oh, no. He said there are people. Sorry, he didn't call her up. He said that there's someone in here. I don't know if it's one or two. You have a back. There's a pain that's been nagging you at, at the base of your spine, between your beginning of your hip and your upper body, whatever, right? So my friend got up. She was kind of, I wouldn't say she was an elderly person. She might have been in her uh, late 50s at that time. Like I said, this was years ago. So she came up there. And he said, he said, he said, are you the person? So she, she, she said, yeah. And she did this. She was pointing here, ready at my back. So he put his hand there. I don't, I, I, I don't want to lie. I don't know if he put water there. I don't know. But I know I remember putting his hand there. And he started, oh, get now. Oh, yeah. Whatever he did, some kung fu karate, something he did, right? And, and, and this way it became embarrassing. So he said, hey, how do you feel now? She said the pain's still there. <laughs> so listen what he can tell her though. Listen what he can tell her. Listen this old false prophet. Uh, see, sometimes you, know, you gotta walk it out. You know, you gotta, you gotta sometimes you sometimes, you know, the spirit gotta I say, listen to this crook. I tell you, all my life, I don't know, I like I say I had to have been called for this because all my life I sat and observed all of these uh, My friend, to my knowledge, back was never fixed. It was never, I don't know if she's still alive or not today. I haven't seen her in ages. I don't know. Very wonderful person. But it is people like them, great, lovely people who truly want to see the power of God work in their lives. When you have agents of Satan, agents of Satan that will come here and mimic the things of God. Uh, I did my teaching on the religious spirit. Please go and watch those videos. I did the, the last one last night. Please go and watch them. But look out for, I'm, I'm not here to bash nobody. I'm not here to, to attack, no. And the only leaders or church members that will be angry and upset about this, these are the exact people I'm talking about. They, they can resonate what I'm talking about. But they don't want to see themselves as a fool given to these people all their life, sitting under these ministries all their life, being raped, pillaged, and robbed financially. So the, what do we do next? We, we attack the messenger. We never discuss the scriptures, we just attack. Who was he? Who do we think he is to say these things? Well, let me know what I think I am. I think I am a citizen, an ambassador of the kingdom of God who's doing exactly what Jesus required me to do. And what is that, Mr. Dewey? Go into my world and preach my gospel. He didn't say they would like it. He never said that. But he also said, though, he says, Kevin, the world, when you decide persecution, so I look forward to it. And it is only confirmation to me. That's what you do for me. You, confer, you confirm to me that I'm on the right track. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word as usual. I thank you for the ability to articulate it in such a way that even a child could understand it. This is the gift that you have given me to comprehend, to understand, to articulate that which I have understood of your word based on what your Holy Spirit have said to me. I cover everyone with the precious blood of Jesus under the sound of my voice those that are currently hearing me now, and those that will hear me in the future. My desire, Father God, is that they all come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that they all uh, allow your word to do spiritual surgery on their heart, moving all of the blindness, the restrictions, the limitations, removing and causing them to unlearn the majority of what they have learned, what was only put in place to, to lock them down to a building, to a person, to a doctrine, everything except the word of the living God. I pray, Father God, just like how Elijah prayed for his servant. Elijah said, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see, not his physical eyes, but his spiritual eyes, so that he can see the things beyond the distractions that he could have visibly uh, uh, see. I pray right now, Father God, that they would remove the anger, the, the bitterness, the resentment, or whatever it is they may have towards me or even this message and see it for what it really is. I pray, Father God, Lord, that, that you would break, break that, 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 that ground of, of, of stubbornness as it relates to being committed to doctrines that are not of you. Release those people 
who are under the false, demonic, evil, witchcraft doctrines of covering. No human being who is subject to sin like anybody else, who has not shed their blood for people, could, could, could blasphemously say they could cover another human being. You did not call a pastor, a teacher, a prophetess, or whoever they call themselves. You did not put in their portfolio to spiritually cover a people. That is why you died. Now that you have reconciled us to Christ, you have the responsibility of covering us. What you did do, though, was put leaders in place to make us acutely aware of that and your rules, laws, and principles. Instead, they mislead, abuse, they mismanage your sheep, pillage and rape them financially, and misled them to things that you never said. But Father, but I thank you that you've given me the boldness to stand to stand boldly on the planet for me. No man did this. You did this. You have placed me here at this time, not to speak my will, not to speak my opinion, no, but to speak your word. You have revealed to me throughout my journey to this point. Kevin, don't be like that. Kevin, don't rape them of their money. Kevin, don't lie to them for your selfish gain. Kevin, preach my word. Give them the scripture. Kevin, sing it over and over in their ears and tell it is inculcated into their mind and tell all they could think about is my word. Do not insert yourself in there. Do not receive glory that belongs to me, Kevin. Instead, Kevin, I made my word very clear to you. Go into the world. Preach my gospel. No matter what they do, you do what I tell you to do because all of you have to stand before me on judgment day. I'm telling you to do this because you do not want to find yourself wanting on the day of judgment. So, Father, I firmly seal this prayer that anyone under the sound of my voice that do not know you as Lord and Savior, any of you that were on the fence listening to me in your car, listening to me by your cell phones, your tablets, and you've been on the fence as to whether or not you should come to Christ, or you didn't want to go because you know this pastor is the fake, you know this teacher is this and that, well, I've just given you the word that you don't have to listen to them if you know they're fake, you listen to the word of God. I've just given you the rules that if they're not preaching the word of God, you have every right to judge them because Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. And if they're not producing the fruit that God say they should produce, then it's time to seek those who are producing that fruit so you could follow them. Because those that are producing the fruit like Kevin will lead you to Jesus Christ. So, Father, we bless you, we honor, we praise you, and we ask these things in the masters and the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So, folks, next week, uh, Monday or Tuesday, I'll be starting my series on the tide. Please uh, follow me then, and definitely next week, Saturday, we will continue to pick up with Church Mafia. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.